Hi, I hate- This week I'm going to teach you how to climb like a girl. Good afternoon or morning or night, wherever you are coming from, it's afternoon for me. Hello, my name is Grace. If you're new to this channel, sometimes I make bouldering videos or climbing videos. If you are returning, hello, it is me again, and I hope that you are having a wonderful day. This week's topic is a bit interesting because I am going to give you some tips on how to climb like a girl. And this is a, a bit of a critical reflection on the way that women are viewed in the climbing world or in the world in general and how the phrase to do something like a girl means that you're weak. Well, I'm here to tell you otherwise. I'm just gonna go through some of the suggestions that I asked on Instagram to my friends. What are some tips you've learnt or observed from climbing with girls? So tip number one is to support other girls because honestly sometimes it feels a little bit like a boys club and I totally agree and can relate to that sentiment because I feel like supporting girls is such an important lesson that we should constantly be telling ourselves as girls not only in climbing but in life. I think that we are all brought up to compete with each other in an attempt to impress, to maybe feel validated or even to some extent feel included in the boys club. I think that this is a bit of a toxic perspective that we have to compete for attention when in reality we really should be just building each other up. Why do I think that we should support each other? Because we probably actually have a lot more in common than we think and we could actually probably relate a lot easier on our experiences and maybe even some of our techniques and I think that's so important just to open up the conversation with a fellow girl climber that when we collaborate something amazing happens where we start relating to each other and opening up a conversation I think that that builds a really safe space for us to introduce new ideas and that may help us be better climbers in the end um and no flame to boys but I am always astounded by how clever and how different a girl's beta can be. And when we collaborate and support each other, this builds this safe space for us to introduce new ideas that may help us be better climbers in the end. Tip number two. Technique is important and so is footwork. Height may be an advantage, something that we can't change, but technique is definitely something that we can work on. I think this tip is gold, honestly, and I think girls excel at this. Well, why? Well, the short answer is that we are literally just shorter. As my friend Annie and I have figured out, there's always going to be a short person beta. It just depends on how much risk you wanna take and how innovative you wanna be when you want to climb some climb. This means repositioning your body a certain way so you can rebalance your center of gravity or it could be trusting your feet or trying to put your foot at a higher foot so stepping on a less nice hold um, and trusting that or it could be learning how to smear and step on really tiny feet and be really precise with your footwork and this whole time I know our friend Bob standing right next to us who is six feet tall just goes well I just reached it and then you just look at him and you're like Okay, man, <laughs> no attack on anyone who is tall because obviously we all have our own strengths and weaknesses, but generally because girls are shorter, they are forced to learn much earlier how to be technical. And I think that's such a great advantage because when it comes to really tricky climbs, you're able to know your body so well that you're able to reach the top. And I think that in itself is such a great skill and we should all be really proud of that. If you want to climb like a girl, you got to practice your technique. And by that, I mean focusing more on the micro changes in your body when you're on the wall, such as maybe being closer to the wall or your foot placement. Practicing technique can also come 
from watching good climbers and seeing where they position their body, where they're positioning their feet, how they're using their feet or how they're using their body to move on the wall without using a lot of energy. And I'll go into that a little more in the next tip. I think to an extent, it is an advantage to have that height, but if you watch professional climbers or any good climbers, you will know that they're very precise with their technique. In saying all of that though, I still really need to work on my footwork because I really dislike smearing and I'm terrified of it. You gotta practice to get better. <laughs> Tip number three is that it's all in the hips. <laughs> you better have some good hips or some flexible hips because as Shakira says, our hips don't lie and I totally agree with that. I was lucky enough to be told this quite early on when I started climbing. I really didn't know what it meant, but people kept telling me, put your hips into the wall. And I was like, what? Well, what's in the hips? The key to unlocking how you position yourself on the wall. Because most of the time when your body feels awkward or uncomfortable, it's probably because you're holding on to something with a little bit of desperation. And it probably also means your body is not in the right position and that you probably didn't use your hips to make yourself feel comfortable enough to stay in a specific position on the wall. Now this is only one part of climbing because the other part is the strength part. So you have to determine which part is the one that you're lacking. Initially, I thought that I would be bad at climbing because I literally have no upper body strength, but because I had flexible hips that I was able to open into the wall, I was actually able to learn how to climb a little bit better. And I found that being able to keep my hips into the wall has been so helpful in saving energy and also has allowed me to feel confident in being able to change my center of gravity as I'm on the wall. So if you're able to manipulate how you position your body, then your limbs have to do less work and you are fully in control of where you want to go next. And then that puts less pressure on your other limbs to hold on so tightly. So that means that it makes the climb overall seem easier at least. And that's how a lot of good climbers seem to move with elegance because they are fully in control of where they're going. And instead of forcing a specific limb to overexert themselves, they're actually placing themselves in an appropriate place so that they can reach next to whatever they need to get to. The way that I use my hips and that I've learned from observing is by pulling them in and when I am going to the next climb, I actually swing them in like an arc motion towards where I wanna go. So if you lead with your hips, then your whole body will follow and it will place you in a better position. And then with enough momentum, you're able to end up in a position where you're much closer to the hold rather than just reaching with your arm. This is something that I have really appreciated over time. And of course, what comes hand in hand with good hip motion is hip flexibility. And if you want any tips on how to increase your hip flexibility, feel free to watch my stretching tips video, which I show you a three part progression on how I like to stretch my hips. Because eventually the more open your hips are, the more variety you'll have to be able to put yourself in a better position. If you want to climb like a girl, use your hips and stretch your hip flexibility because that totally helps in being a better climber. So that's it guys. Those are some tips on how you can climb like a girl. I hope that they've been helpful. Um, and if not, maybe you can provide some of your own tips on how to climb like a girl. And maybe next time when you're at the gym, show your support to your fellow girl climbers and hopefully it will bloom to a beautiful friendship. If not, you can just do your thing and I also recommend that too because I do that sometimes. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video and I'll see you next week with some video that's probably not going to be related to climbing, but stay tuned. I just want to show you my cat, Sugar. Come here. There she is. There's my cat. Hello! Hi! I hate YouTube! That's what she's saying. This is my cat. Everybody say hi to Sugar. Hi Sugar! Hello, hello, hello! I love life! Yes! And she, Sugar my cat, is the best climber in the world because you know what? Because <laughs> she's a cat and cats are just amazing. So I'm gonna let her go because she is, um, she's a bit tortured right now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry Sugar. Love you. Goodbye. <laughs>